welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. Before we dive into my story and my launches, I want to thank you, as I do every week, for all the great feedback and all the likes. Really love it that you watch my videos and you give me your feedback. Keep it coming. All right, so my story. We had Father's Day a week or so ago, and I thought I'd tell you a really awesome story about my father. So he's 84 now, and he's had a really long and really interesting life. He joined the US Air Force immediately after graduating from high school, and it left some incredibly strong impressions on him. It instilled some really strong values on him, and the thing I really loved about his time in the Air Force, it, it shaped his life, and for many, many years, he would refer back to it regularly. A after joining, he did his training in Texas, and then he got to travel to Japan, and he did very classified intelligence work that still to this day, he doesn't actually share. Now. As you grow older, we find that age actually brings some challenges. And for my dad, his physical health is still good, but dementia is this really cruel thing. And it just kind of eats away at your brain, at your memories, bit by bit. And over the last years, it's become a little bit harder to connect with him. A, a year or so ago, he was living in this assisted living facility in Arizona. Perfectly good place, but he was alone. It was kind of difficult for any family to, to visit him, and we didn't really have a, a good handle on his condition or his care. After lots of investigation and working with my sisters, we found a, a better place for him in Pennsylvania. Place looked great, and the thing that I really liked about it is that my sisters and my dad's brother were going to be nearby so he could get some local, local attention from his family. From here in Seattle, I was really apprehensive about this move. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We're talking about it for a really, really long time. And the agreement is that, that Carmen and I are gonna somehow get dad from Arizona to Pennsylvania. It's not clear on the timing. It's nearly not clear how we're gonna make this happen. And you know, even in the best of times, change is difficult. But when you're a senior citizen, when your memory isn't great, when you've been living at the same place for a while, change can be really, really hard. My sisters and I have just months of discussion and planning and the schedule's just uncertain. The logistics are uncertain. I'm kind of in this mode for a long time where I'm on edge where something's about to happen, but it's not ready to happen yet. And it's, it's honestly really tough because we've never had to do anything even close to this before, but I want to make it as easy as possible for him. And I start to get this idea that I actually want to make it a, a memorable journey. I don't just want this to be a plane trip. I want something like a little bit special for him. We're, we're discussing for a long, long time and we got to wait for, for availability and we got to wait for schedules and suddenly it's time and everything lines up and we've got a plan, we've got a schedule and maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but to me it kind of felt like a, a moonshot and we had exactly one chance to to get it right. And we're, we're suddenly at this point of after all these months, it's like, well, we got to actually bail and leave Seattle in two days. And here's the plan. We're flying from Seattle to Arizona. We're going to arrive. We're going to show up at his place the next morning. We have no idea of the condition. We're going to pack up all of his things. We are going to fly to Philadelphia the next day. We're going to get him settled in. And then we're going to return to Seattle. And we're gonna, we have to actually do all of this in three days, fingers crossed. And when you think about this, there's just any number of uncertainties, um, starting with the point that he didn't actually know if he had any valid ID. And we weren't quite sure if he could, we could even get him on the plane. So I printed out every possible document I could find to kind of prove who he was and my relationship to him, hoping that I would find a, a sympathetic uh, agent if necessary at the airport. But there's just the, all these question marks in the air above my head as I'm just thinking, is this going to work and is he going to be able to travel okay? And we're just about ready to leave Seattle. Now, I want to make this really like something beyond just put him on a plane and fly. And thinking back a little bit on his life, and we've done a little bit of cleaning here as well, I start to think about his military service. And I get this great idea and I'm thinking, what if I could get him some kind of like a, a hero's greeting as we, as we arrive in in Pennsylvania. And I don't even know where it came from, but I kind of get this kind of vision of like this like movie scene of just a bunch of people there to, to greet him and just make him feel just super, super welcome. But 
we're in the middle of a pandemic. And remember, we're like two days away from departure. So time is really tight, but you know what? You got to try. Well, what do I do? I put a call out on Twitter and on Facebook, and I started getting some replies right away. Some awesome Amazon colleagues, some friends, some friends of friends, some veterans organizations, like with, within an hour or so, I, I had all these great replies and I'm doing my best to juggle all of this. And I, I get the, the kind of the overwhelming consensus is we can definitely do something. Time's really tight. It's a pandemic, but nevertheless, we're going to try. And what I learned is we've got these good people just trying their best to do something great for a veteran. So away we go. We depart Seattle. I've got my extra paperwork with his identity just in case. Get to Arizona, pack them all up, clean all those things. Luckily, find a couple of IDs to make sure that we can actually travel. Get them to, to off on the plane to Pennsylvania. It's just a whirlwind. It's, it's like we, in the, the space of two days, we make all of this great stuff happen. I, I've got these folks on the other end of the, the line that are kind of waiting in, in Pennsylvania for the, the go signal. And I'm, I'm, I'm emailing and texting and coordinating the last details from the plane. And I'm kind of getting an idea of, well, something could happen. I'm doing my best to like not get my hopes up, but I'm kind of telling Carmen a little bit of what's going on. And she's like, oh, okay, well, you know, be, be a little bit patient. You, you, we, don't, we don't really know. And let's not get, get super, super excited. And I'm going to be just grateful for, for, for anything. I just want this to be awesome for my dad. And I, as we land, we had an agreement that I would text everybody that was going to be helping us out. And I, we land, I, I do that, get my dad a little bit prepped. And I say, Dad, there's, there's some people that are going to want to say hello to you. And they remember you for your service. And I still got this awesome Hollywood vision in my head. And it's like, well, this could be great, or maybe it's not anything at all. Well, we, we get there, we... we um, we leave the plane and my dad's in a wheelchair just because it's not easy for him to walk those long distances. And we, we, the, the first group said, we'll meet you at baggage claim. And we, we get out of the elevator and there's some of my AWS colleagues and uh, uh, one of their friends who was an AWS partner. They've got a, a big welcoming sign and they're like one of the, the, um, one of the guy's daughters actually helped to make the sign. And my dad's like so happy that these people are there to, to welcome it. It's like so, so awesome. And we, we, they, they did all this just, just because they could. And we, he, he's really happy. We take some great pictures and get our bags and off to my dad's new home. We're, we're, we're online. I'm, I'm texting the, the other folks up by his, his new home. And I, I've got this organization of the, these veterans that love to do these awesome greetings. And they, they text me and they say, well, we're going to meet in this particular parking lot on the side of this, this shopping center. We're kind of like in maybe an, an hour's north of the, the airport. And lots and lots of traffic. We are, we're, we're, we're getting through traffic. And uh, my, my sister Lisa texts me and she's like, um, Jeff, there's a lot of motorcycles here. I wonder what's going on. So do I. Well, we pull in this parking lot. There's like at least 20 veterans on motorcycles. There's a couple pickup trucks with, with flags mounted in the beds of the pickup trucks. My dream is there. And all these amazing people, they salute my dad. They greet him. It's the actual like picture in my head, somehow extracted out of my head and, and turned into the most awesome reality you can just possibly uh, imagine. They're so, so happy to see him. Everybody's masked. Everybody's keeping their distance. But nevertheless, they give him the that warm welcome. It, it's time to proceed. We're, we're about five, 10 miles away from, from his, his, uh, his new home. And they say, Jeff, let's, let's do it. Let's make this happen. And we, we line up and they say, we're, we're making you a, a convoy. We're going to do it. And they, they, they give us, they give me the plans and the, the leaders pull out. They give us the instructions and they say, you just fo follow us. We're going to get you there. Well, this was so awesome. We, we get in the car. It's our turn. My dad is just totally, totally 2000% thrilled. And he's, he's kind of getting the sense that these are some veterans and that this is special and it's for him. We tell him, this is all for you, dad. This is, 
this is for your service. This is what you've earned. We, we get to his location. We arrive. All these amazing people, they're all still masked. They're still being careful. But one by one, they each took the time to, to chat with my dad at, at length who they were, what they did, exchange a couple of, of stories of their, their service. These big, gruff people riding their incredibly loud, super powerful motorcycles. You, you'd be, see these folks and you'd be a little bit scared of them sometimes, honestly. They were the kindest, most gentle, thoughtful people you can ever possibly imagine. It was so, so awesome. They, they were happy to receive thanks. They were happy to do it. They refused my offer to, to fully replenish their, their pizza fund. They just said, nope, this is the thing that we do. Now, my dad's memory just usually doesn't last all that long. And unfortunately, at this point, you can have a conversation with him. And five minutes later, that conversation is, is history. I remember it word for word, and it's just kind of gone. But the next day, we'd, we'd gotten him settled in, and there's just a little bit of a process and a bit of a, a quarantine he had to go through. So we, we went there one last time to, to check on him, and he remembered. He remembered those guys. We made such a, a great impression on him. It was, it was so awesome and made him happy. My, my vision was accomplished and walked away thinking we, we did something awesome for my dad. And I learned there's just all these great people around. And if you just ask them to do something amazing, they'll do something amazing. And that's my story for you today. All right, let's get into the launches. So it turns out you actually can't break the laws of physics. And this comes into play when you're building complex applications powered by web services. Latency matters a whole bunch. When you multiply your latency out across a whole bunch of requests and round trips and network hops, Every tiny bit of latency adds to the overall perceived speed or slowness of your application. Well, AWS Wavelength is designed to help you build ultra low latency applications. Our big news today is that there's a brand new Wavelength zone for you in London. You get AWS compute and storage at the edge of the Vodafone 4G, 5G network. I think you're gonna look at this and start to think of tons of really awesome new use cases. Here's a couple to get you started. Think about autonomous vehicles, smart factories, the power to do machine learning inference at the edge. You could do interactive experiences at live sporting events. You could do telepresence. Start getting really creative and tell me what you come up with. This is super, super easy for you to use. You go to the console, you opt in, you create this little object called a carrier gateway that's gonna fit in between your VPC and the carrier network. Then you launch two EC2 instances. The first one's gonna be in your region and you use that simply for testing connectivity. The second one is gonna be in the wavelength zone for your app. And then all you gotta do then is set up a carrier IP address that's gonna be the IP that when connected to via the 4G, 5G network, that's gonna to route to your instance running in the wavelength zone. Super, super easy. There's plenty of docs to help you get started. So with this launch in London, there's now 14 wavelength zones. They're in the US, the UK, South Korea, and Japan. If you want to learn a lot more about this, you know what to do, read that what's new. Next up, an awesome new feature for Amazon Aurora called database cloning. So you probably know Aurora already. It's a really awesome database. It's both MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible. There's a variant called Amazon Aurora Serverless that makes it on-demand and auto-scaling. So this cool new feature is called database cloning. With this feature, you can create a new database that has the same cluster and volume and the same data as the original, and you do it in the same region. This is faster and it's more space efficient than creating a new database from scratch. Underneath the covers, it uses a thing you probably know if you're a dev called a copy on write model. This means there's just one copy of the data until you change the original or change the clone. Then it just forks into two pieces behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about that at all. Amazon Aurora takes care of all that for you. As always, I think this is gonna be a really cool thing to inspire you some creativity. Great for some test environments. You could do things like if you've got a schema change coming up, you could 
do a clone, test that schema change and your queries in the, the cloned copy. If you've got some really CPU intensive queries, create that clone, run those queries on the clone. Or maybe you find some really weird bug in your production code and you it's data dependent. So take that production database, create a quick clone, keep it off on the side and use that to then figure out a way to reproduce that production bug in your dev or your test environment. As always, get creative, give it a shot and let me know what you come up with. Here's a couple of important details for you. You can have up to 15 clones, but you can't clone a clone. That would make you into the no clone zone. Don't want to do that. To learn more, just go ahead, read the what's new. And finally, last but for sure not least, a brand new public registry for CloudFormation. I think you're really going to love this. It's basically a searchable collection of CloudFormation extensions. Within this registry, you can discover, provision, and manage all these cool new things that you can add to your CloudFormation templates. Inside the registry, there's both resource types and the provisioning logic. These can come from a couple different places. First, we've worked with a ton of partners in the AWS Partner Network, and also anybody in the developer community can build and publish items in the registry. If you jump in and start taking a look, you'll find there's already over 35 extensions for more than a dozen of our launch partners. One awesome part of this, it works with the rest of AWS. That means things like CDK, CloudFormation drift detection, AWS config, and so forth. Now, if you're running a big org, you got a bunch of org units, it also works with CloudFormation stack sets to work across your entire organization or particular org units therein. You can all, also within the registry, you can simply put modules and the modules can kind of put a wrapper or, or encapsulate various of your res con resource configurations for reuse. To learn a ton more about this, just read Steve's awesome blog post. And that's what I got for you this week. I sure hope you enjoyed my story and the three launches. I love your comments. I love the likes, so keep them coming. I read them all. Click through, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.